So, wait, just to confirm everyone's mic is working again, Fendra, can we get your mic test? Oh, uh, yep. Clara, is your mic good? Yes. Kifari? Yeah, I'm good. Chacha? Yeah, sure. All right, Judah? Yep, I'm good. And Shakina? Yes. All right, so we're going to be recording this, um, this Zoom meeting for the rest of the judges. Um, also, um, for POIs, you can please indicate before your speech whether you would prefer to take a POI via um, messaging in the chat via unmuting your mic, uh, your microphone and asking for a POI or by turning your camera on and holding a piece of paper that says POI on it. Uh, you can pick any one of those methods before you start your speech, just so that um, whenever someone wants a POI, it's uh, easier and it doesn't cause a distraction. Um, all right, I guess that's it. Can we start recording the meeting? Oh, it's already recording. Okay, so um, without further ado, under the motion, um, wait, let me just read the motion again. Under the motion, this house would heavily punish companies that replace their human workers with machines. I call upon the prime minister to open the case for team government. Here, here. My speech will start in three, two, one. Panels, we believe that each human beings and also workers, they, they have rights to be uphold, right? Whereas certain workers have rights so that they can actually be able to work and these rights is actually absolute. Whereas companies actually give them a certain labor law that so that they can actually gain a certain protection in a certain company so that they do not actually like get fired really easily by certain companies so that their rights should be uphold at the very first place. So us as the government, we want to actually uphold this human right. And also uh, we believe that this right is actually absolute to uphold for the workers so that we can actually gain protection and also better welfare of the state. So the status quo shows that currently that machines are actually evolving really quickly, whereas the human uh, human life resources are being replaced by certain machines because company thinks that it is actually more effective to have certain machines because they do not actually have to uh, have a certain welfare to pay for a certain engine, for example, uh, compared to when you have human resources, you have to pay for some welfare, right? Whereas we have a few problems the moment that we change this certain human resource into machines. Because first, we believe that it will create a much more bigger structural unemployment rate in our world today. Because currently, in our world, even in develop, uh, mostly in developing countries, we have a strong cases of a uh, high rate of unemployment rate in certain countries, whereas people cannot actually get a certain work because they do not actually have the capabilities to, uh, to have a certain uh, merit, for example. And the moment that we believe that these certain, certain machines will be actually re reducing their chances of getting an employment rate at the very first place. So our goal is clear that we want to actually implement this motion so that we can actually first protect the rights of these certain workers. And second, why it will bring a much bigger welfareness in our side of the house. So in our our proposal, we have a few mechanism is that first, we don't actually want to strictly ban the certain machines, uh, a company in making machines, but what we want is actually to punish the machines through making certain charges and we want to heavily punish them by making 80% uh, of the taxes need to be getting paid by these companies the moment that they are paid a certain, uh, a certain machines. And also we want, what we want is by this tax to, we want to actually reduce, redistribute it to actually gain a much better welfareness in the society, for example, in the education or example of free aids and so on and so forth. So in my, in my speech, I'll be talking about first, why the companies are actually culpable and second, why it will bring a better improvement to the state welfare machines, right? So let's move on to my arguments. My first argument is why the companies are actually culpable. So we say that companies actually already sign contracts with the workers, for example, the working hours, the compensations, and also the wages and certain law that the moment 
uh, that workers cannot getting fired really easily and the companies and the moment that these workers supposedly getting fired they have to actually violate certain laws for example they do not uh, get into they have too many days off and so on and so forth so that we believe that it is actually not just to simplify uh, the moment that the company can easily replace these certain workers with the machines because we believe that it is actually uh, it is not uh, upholding the rights of the workers itself. So three layers for these reasons of argument. First, we believe that it is actually violating the labors of laws. Because notice, the moment that the company wants to replace the humans with machines, it means that they're just actually letting go of these people and replacing them with machines. And the moment that we don't actually put fine into these certain companies, the labor laws wouldn't actually be exist at the very first place. Because what we want is for that these companies, they can actually have certain machines and also certain workers at the same time. So that the moment that these machines is actually replacing a certain worker, they, the, the re, re, redistribution can actually create uh, to be getting better in the welfare in the state so that we can actually create a much better quality of worker, which I will explain later on my arguments. Second reason is we believe that these companies is not actually functioning as a business should because we believe that each business, business should be functional to improve the human economics that exists in a certain state. And the purpose is has to actually improve a certain human life's criteria in our in what we believe in. And the moment that the company is actually replacing certain machine, uh, certain humans with machines, it means that these companies isn't actually improving the the unemployment rate that exists in the certain countries, for example, because they do not actually help this uh, into capturing these certain problems at the very first place. Because we believe that they are taking the human as aspects and it's actually also unjust at the very first place. By making this, econ we believe that the moment that they make certain machines into these companies, we believe, and, and not actually putting fine into those companies, we believe it will actually make the company worse. Because for example, like cartels aren't actually allowed because even if that they are actually improving this business of the uh, company, but we believe that it is actually also, re uh, also worsening the economic growth of a certain country. And also we, we actually doesn't uphold this certain uh, business as a function at the very first place. The third reason is we believe that company do not have to offer a certain welfare for the machines itself. And also we believe that certain companies have an un uh, uh, unfair advantage over other companies the moment that they can actually produce certain machines and they do not actually have to uphold the welfareness for each every machines. Because notice, each companies, the moment that they have worker, they have to uphold certain welfareness for their workers itself. For example, compensation for holidays, compensation for the moment that, for example, if they have a certain accidents at work, the company has to offer this worker a certain protection so that they actually have to pay for this welfareness, which, which mean that the tax of the companies will actually be reduced at the very first place. Whereas the moment that machines are not getting welfareness, the company should actually get taxed higher so that we can create a counterbalance so that the, the moment that it will actually create a much fairness of the competition itself. And the companies that actually have certain machines doesn't actually one can be able to monopolize other companies that don't have the same capabilities as them. So that we believe beyond the, uh, uh, because of those reasons, the company is actually unjust if we don't actually put fine into these machines itself. My second argument is why it will actually improve the state welfareness of machines. We believe that the money obtained will be actually able to fix the structural unemployment rate that exists in a certain state, right? Because the reason that the, this unemployment rate is actually exists is because the government is actually unable to provide good educations and proper way to give the people a certain, and the society a certain job. And the moment that these companies actually increase the machines in, uh, oh, no, thank you, in, in a certain machines, it will actually improve the structural unemployment rate. Why is that so? Because the moment that the company have more machines, they have to pay more taxes for the government so that we believe that the moment that we can distribute, uh, the government can distribute this money to making better welfareness of the society, for example, healthcare and education, it will actually be more sustainable in the long run. And not only that, it will actually improve the quality of worker at the very first place. Because notice, the moment that we have good educations, not only that workers can actually end up to a uh, make uh to have to work in a certain companies but for example if we have a good education we can actually give them much more sustainable job for example engineers so that they can actually have a much better quality of life in our side of the house so moving on to my trade-off the opposition might say that the development in the country would be better 
and also economic growth would be increasing really better on their side of the house the moment that they uphold machines. But we believe that we uh, rather than we actually improve the economic benefits for only companies that they own itself, we believe that we should actually have a better protection of the worker because it's actually more important to not only respect the they are actually human rights but also to be able to protect the sustainability so that they can actually have a proper life so that they can have a better quality of life so be, because of those reasons we are proud to propose thank you okay the prime minister spent eight minutes and 16 seconds on that speech now to open the case from opposition we call upon the leader of opposition here here Starting my speech in three, two, one. Companies doesn't need to be necessarily punished just because they replace their workers with machines. Notice on how not 100% of those workers are going to be replaced by machines, right? There are going to always be human workers that are still going to work and number of machines working won't be that much until the extent that there are going to be only 20 workers in a company, for example. We can see that um, we can see that under their side of the house, they are they are over patronizing things, and they think that uh, they think that um, those uh, minority, for example, workers are not going to get any job at all, and they are going to live in poverty. We are going to prove on how this won't happen. So, um, just on how machines are also expensive, right? Even if companies are going to replace all of their workers with machines, we think that. Um, these workers are not going to live in poverty because companies have enough money money to buy machines to begin with. Companies can give compensations to workers, so workers won't live in poverty. So the problem here is that companies are going to make society, especially those minorities or workers, even more vulnerable, and I'm going to explain those in my arguments. So our goal on our side of the house is that we want to protect workers by not punishing the companies. And we are going to apply some mechanisms First, about how we are going to provide compensations or um, education for the workers that they are taken. And we are going to um, protect, we are going to uh, implement laws in which our workers couldn't be over, um, over exploited. Now, I'm going to bring two points of arguments. First, about how it's justifiable to punish these companies. Second, about how each one is going to be helpful. But first, some points of rebuttal. So they said that they are going to protect the rights of workers, right? But we can have under the side of the house, even if policy of workers exist or those kind of rules exist, companies are still going to push workers and often above the limit because they only want right, especially when there are going to be less help from these kind of machines. These workers are still going to um over uh, are still going to be overworked during the holidays and they are going to get severe injuries, for example, from working. We can see that compared to machines where injuries um, or broken machines are uh, could easily be fixed. Um, these kind of injuries uh, that happen to workers are not going to be easily um, healed, right? You can see that under their side of the house because they have overworked their workers, for example, they are going to create those workers even more vulnerable, which means that their side of the house can't even protect the rights of workers to begin with. Now, going on to my first argument about how it's unjustifiable to punish. So the government, uh, the government team pushes for equality in job fields um, or equal machines and um, equ uh, uh, equal human workers, right? But compared to human, machines are way more faster and way more um, efficient and have more powers. We can see that under their side of the house, the government will demand workers to work as hard as uh, and as effective as machines, especially when companies have a certain goal to get the most profit. You can see that under the government side of the house, workers ex uh, over exploitation will always happen and workers are going to be even more vulnerable. We can see that workers couldn't um, couldn't fight those companies because workers are minorities. And we can see that under the other side of the house, um, workers are still going to be harmed. Workers are vulnerable to begin with and most of them comes from poor family or society, right? They're going to be, Overexploited with minimum wages, for example, and the government is making those who are vulnerable even more vulnerable, and they can't protect those kind of workers. Meanwhile, on the other side of the house, workers are going to find better jobs that will not exploit them. Um, for example, the workers are going to find 
jobs that will um, that uh, that will be replaced that that are not going to be replaced by machines, right? The workers are going to get um, educations, for example, that was given by our mechanism, and we can see that under our side of the house, workers are going to have uh, more quality, and they are going to find better jobs that uh, than they are having right now. Therefore, we think that it is unjustifiable for us to punish because at the end of the day, those workers are not are, uh, are going to get their rights away. Now, going on to my second argument about how punishment is going to be harmful. So we can see that companies always pursue profits and they also produce a lot of needs. Um, for example, um, needs, the needs that are needed by the society, especially With punishing um, companies, we can see that we are going to delay productions of um, of those needs, and we can see that delayed production will create um, less needs available, and items are going to be rare and scarcity will happen. Um, we can see that under their side of the house, needs are going to be even more expensive. Workers are not going to be uh, workers are not going to have the access to these kind of basic needs, and workers are not going. Um, are not going to be able to feed their families, for example. Meanwhile, we can see that under their side of the house, the riches, the riches who have caused workers to suffer a lot through overworking, for example, EPC, will still get their needs. We can see that under their side of the house, they are only supporting, um, they, uh, they are only supporting those rich people, those um, rich people who owns the company, for example, instead of protecting the workers who we need to actually protect. We can see that this is really going to be harmful. Um, and unfair towards the worker, and it's going to make them even more vulnerable. Under our side of the house, we are also going to provide higher education, right? The government won't want high unemployment rates in the society because it will worsen the economy, for example. Therefore, the government will provide education for people who got replaced. And we can see that um, with uh, the education provided, these kind of people are going to find a better job, for example, um, and they are going to uh, be able to escape the chain of poverty. As in, for example, Kartu Cipta Kerja, in which you're going to gain skills provided by the government by trainings, for example. On the other side of the house, workers or minorities are going to be even more educated and they can't get this under the other side of the house because workers are going to be even more vulnerable at the first place. We can see that under the other side of the house, workers are not going to have access to education at all, especially when they are still going to be overworked, for example, they won't have chances to um, uh, to access these kind of educations. We think that it is okay if a job got taken because we are going to provide a better training for these workers, right? And we want to create a more developed and skilled um, workers. We can see that under our side of the house, education for poor people to escape the chain of poverty is going to be provided. And we can see that under our side of the house, the economy is going to be better and people are going to live a better life. In comparison, in which your proposition are going to over exploit their workers, for example, um, they are going to make these minorities even more vulnerable. Our side, even if some uh, some jobs are going to be taken, we're going to provide higher education, we're going to protect the workers. Therefore, we're proud of. Uh, we thank the leader of opposition for that speech. And just a quick reminder for future speeches uh, to turn on your camera when delivering your speeches for aesthetic purposes. Now to respond to the case of leader of opposition, we call upon the deputy prime minister. Here, here. Um, I will begin my speech in three, two, one. Uh, Technology is the developing way too quickly, while the skills of workers are developing way too slowly. This motion will uh, fix this asymmetry and improve the life of workers. Um, first of all, I would like to deliver some rebuttals regarding to the what uh, to what the first opposition speaker has said. Um, uh, they said that machines are expensive and workers aren't going to live in poverty because companies will give compensations as they have enough money to buy uh, the machines anyway. But we don't believe that this is what's going to happen. Because first, companies uh, are profit-based. Uh, they want to spend as little amount of money as possible while also getting as many profit as possible. Giving compensations will just burden them with more spending. 
Also, the compensation itself will be taken from the company's profit, making their profit decrease, which is counterproductive to the goal of the company, which is to get the most profit. And with low profit as well, uh, company's health will also be at risk. So uh, we believe that companies will not give compensation for workers, thus uh, making them vulnerable to poverty. Uh, so moving on to my extension. Uh, in my extension, I will um, explain why uh, our policy will protect uh, the workers. Um, as we established, the technology growth is uh, going very fast right now, and companies started using machines and computer programs, etc., in the place of human workers. So the human workers will lose their job because they are replaced with uh, machines. And here we see a major uh, we see a major harm. Because when there's a, there's a big workers un unemployment rate, the life of these workers are at risk. Also, the economy of the states at, at large, um, they lose their jobs. They, uh, uh, which means they lose their source of income, which means they do not have enough income uh, to support their spending. And when there are many workers getting unemployed in a rel relatively short period of time, uh, it could lead to poverty. How? Um, because when these workers are, are unemployed, uh, not only they they lose their income, they also have to look for another job to replace their old job. But as the working field is now populated by machines, uh, their chance of getting a, a new job is even smaller. Uh, this in turn won't help decreasing the number of unemployed workers. These workers will be a burden for the government as well, because government will uh, have to give some support for the unemployed. Uh, they have to give some real cash uh, to ensure that these people can still uh, have their life sustained. And when there are a lot of unemployed workers, uh, the government's burden uh, becomes even bigger. They have to supply the unemployed with welfare, but they don't have enough income from taxes as, as the number of people paying for taxes decreased because they are unemployed. This will make the economy of the state in danger and because of the low income and the spending of the government. This can be prevented by making sure that these workers never lose, never lose their job in the first place. And our proposal ensures this. Why? The first reason is because we allow for more workers to exist in companies and not uh, have their job be taken away. As companies don't want to don't want to pay for fines, they have to make sure that they still have enough number of human workers. They have to obey the rules that the government made, uh, and also with big fines, uh, they that they have to pay. Companies, of course, will uh, have to find a way to um, accommodate uh, human workers. Uh, beside the machine, and the second the second reason is uh, because we incent incentivize companies to not unemploy all their workers all of a sudden and instead open room for a steady restructuring of the company. This looks like uh, companies educating their workers to do electrical jobs, cleaning jobs, or other blue collar jobs that won't be taken away because of some machine. Uh, this is beneficial because even the workers uh, with low skill levels will still be able to get jobs under our side of the house because uh, we'll still be able to get jobs in under our side of the house. And this also um, um, address the uh, uh, this also address the the protection for workers, uh, as we don't, as we still give them a chance to work and a chance to develop their skills, even with the lower uh, skill level of job. Um, the third point is protecting workers will lead to better development of the country because we don't prioritize the richest one percent to make good innovations, but rather prioritize improving the entire workforce. When human workers are replaced by machine, machines, the positions left in the company are only the higher positions like chief directors, etc., and the lower position with lower income, uh, they will be replaced. When this happens, um, the workers that are already 
have low, lower income, they will lose their income entirely. And the already good uh, income workers will um, will get more and more money. And we think this is uh, unbalanced for the uh, economy. And with our um, with our proposal, uh, we make sure to we, we make sure this uh, imbalance will not happening. So that is why we are proud to propose this motion. Thank you. We thank the Deputy Prime Minister, Prime Minister for that speech. And now to continue the case from opposition, we call upon the Deputy Leader of Opposition. Here, here. Okay, wait, uh, guys, for POR, you can just unmute your microphone, yeah. Because comms that you can, I got the Oh, okay. I'm gonna start my speech in three, two, one. We can't advance as a humanity just because we diminish this advancement. We wouldn't be transitioning into a better life standard the moment we sideline the chance of having better services and better quality products. Only under our side that you wouldn't get blinded by the illusion of prosperity. We're so proud to oppose, right? I have three questions in my speech. Firstly, will be is punishing companies justified? No, right? Uh, firstly, because uh, the question will be, do companies have responsibility to their workers, right? This is what Prime Minister has been telling you all the time. We understand that, yes, they have responsibility to their workers. They have responsibility to provi provide them with proper wages and welfare protection during their time as a labor, right? However, this responsibility is already fulfilled the moment they are working in that time and in place and is already fulfilled the moment you're giving out incentive for workers that you replace, right? So government cannot riot that these people will be suddenly be miserable and homeless the, the moment they get fired from the companies and they're replaced by automations, right? Because in status quo, they actually have received money in the time while they are setting down looking for jobs, right? Because it's, it is part of the responsibility that companies should give to their workers, right? So there will be some money given during their time jobless before they find another jobs, right? So yeah, so we clear that out. Second, I think that the, in the principle of economy is that you have to have a certain sacrifices for the biggest net benefit or the biggest output, right? That is to say that the biggest responsibility for companies is to literally provide the best services and goods to the society, right? So the government cannot just throw this entirety of giving people jobs as responsibility to companies, right? Well, I'll talk about this in my third question later. But I'm going I'm going to talk about uh, how this is literally the biggest responsibility of companies, right? Because uh, giving people out the best services and the best goods will only manifest the, the moment when you have better machines for efficiency and uh, when you're only giving out your money for like maintenance of the machines instead of, of like monthly wages towards your uh towards your workers right so we take the so so we take government's claim when they say that oh this this will probably give them uh, uh, lesser output because they don't have to pay for wages we understand but on the comparative of that is that it's society to begin with have like better quality of products in which they can use their purchasing powers to to purchase right so what i'm so what i already proved to you as the opposition is that how we get minimum investment for bigger net benefits and this is the only kind of responsibility that the company should cater to in the end of the day so under our side you get better incentive for companies to develop as you give them the freedom to actually use automation and to better their productivity rates to begin with right so if government uh government wants to talk about the uh, government has already given you two responsibilities of the companies in which they have to provide jobs i don't think it's their responsibility the responsibility of company is to gain provide a better quality and services and that's Point. only be, and no and that's only uh fulfilled under our set of the house also on the second questions then uh but okay judah do you have antitrust laws on your side yes okay i don't uh, okay so second on the can we benefit from punishing these this companies no right so even if in the end of uh, in the end of the debate government can actually prove why automation is bad we will leap into the bridge that's to say that as long as opposition can prove as to why punishing them will lead to a worse outcome so it takes this debate right why because first highlight the word heavily as they will impose huge taxes towards this company that logically means in uh, reducing the aggregate profits that companies attain right however this literally means company has justifications to lower their wages and exploit their existing labors into a productive state just because they need to have coverage towards this loss right clara has already told you about this about how under their side of the house uh, 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 companies will actually force their labors to cover the 
the loss of the profits, right? So the types of jobs that will be automated, I think this is not characterized by government at all. So I'm going to bring the characterization here. Here, the types of jobs that will auto that will be automated are the types of jobs that require intensive maintenance and high effectivity rates, right? So Clara, Clara had already told you that the comparative, right? The under both sides, profit-driven companies will always exist. But under our side, you don't push companies to force their laborers working like animals to equalize their uh, their across their other companies contenders who use AIs, right? Under our side, you actually give them the power to invest in in machines and don't force the laborers as the comparative to achieve this uh, huge productive state that only can a machine can attain, right? Because not this the type of jobs that is going to get automated. It's not the type of jobs that require human skill and like uh, precise, unique uh, human capabilities, right? These are the type of jobs in the manufacturers that you that you literally require all night to work on. That you literally have like a fast uh, quantities of products to produce in like a short time of span, right? Under our side, you get you have better protection of this worker the moment you don't force them into this kind of habitual routine as a workers, right? So I. I believe that under their side, you're going to it's going to be worse when you punish these companies because they literally give the justification to again first lower the wages and the quality uh, and the uh, quality towards their workers to begin with. But second, you actually push them uh, to force their laborers to uh, to cover for these losses, right? So the third and the last most important questions will be who brings more prosperity, right? I have two answers for these questions. First is that please. Don't let government trap you with this holistic idea of companies' responsibility as it absolves the state from their own primary responsibility, right? Which is to make sure that everyone has a market segmented to their skill and a progressive policy to develop their skill as a workers, right? The moment that the, uh, the moment when technology advances and their skills becomes obsolete, it is not the company's responsibility to to, to lower their productivity rates and overall giving out uh, bad quality products to the society, but it is the state's jobs to identify the high rate of unemployment. And and increasing their education and tra training sector, right? So I basically is something that prime ministers have already brought you, but how they will get better education and whatnot. I don't understand. I don't think that that could happen the moment when you see this uh, utopic idea of people having jobs, right? I think you need, you only need you need to realize that some skills become obsolete and therefore it pro promotes for like better advancing of education and training, right? So the seemingly utopic benefits that, that prime minister wants you to believe can literally only exist the moment you realize that the aggregate working skill in your country has reached a point where it become irrelevant to the job fields existing, right? So the company's, is, uh, is, company's jobs is like not to train individuals that don't fit into the requirements to be able to fit these requirements. Their jobs is to filter potential workers to the best possible individuals that can go up with their work demands, right? That's why in uh, the way that companies uh, filter out their employees is actually by uh, reviewing CVs. It's literally uh, by giving them interviews, for example, because it is important to have like a, a great individuals to be able to uh, cope with the work demands and actually provide the best uh, products to the society to begin with, which is what I already proved to you is the most important responsibility of uh, companies, right? So what happened then under our right? What what's uh, what is something that we want to push, right? We want to go government to realize that structured unemployment exists, and you push them to implement policies that can actually better help workers to uh, develop their skill as a as an individual, right? Clara has already told you that policies like Cartochip that exist, where government provide them monthly incomes and actually education trainings and job trainings to begin with, right? These are the types of policies that are uh, that you get. The moment you understand that we are in like huge dire needs of workers collective enhancements and empowerments so what do we prove under our side we prove to you that first it is not the responsibility of companies to actually provide all people the type of jobs that they need to live right but second we already proved to you why punishing these companies will literally be worse under their side but thirdly under our side will you only get governments realizing that their workers needs to develop and under our side is uh, under our side is that people can actually attain better jobs and better quality products right under a, a government you have these illusions that people will all have their jobs but the, the aggregate quality of their life is significantly lower we're so proud to oppose thank you we thank the lead, deputy leader of opposition for that speech now um, to conclude the substantive portion of government speeches we call upon the government whip Hi, can everyone hear me good? 
Yes, you're audible. Okay. Um, also, I just I accept POIs through the chat, please. So just uh, text your POI in the chat, and I'll probably get get to you. Okay. I'm going to start my speech in three. Wait, sorry. Okay, three, two, one. Structural unemployment is the problem in this debate. So far, opposition has just been saying, well, it's not the company's fault, so therefore we shouldn't do anything about it. Number one, I think they've just been incredibly elitist in this debate, given that they haven't actually prioritized the workers, the most vulnerable actor. But secondly, I think they've scurried away from their burden, which was to prove why structural reason, like prove structural reasons as to why unemployment can actually be solved on their side of the house. Three clarifications before I get into two questions this debate. Number one, are companies actually culpable? And secondly, will this policy be better off for workers and the country's development overall? Three clarifications. Number one, the goal with this policy is to allow smoother transitions for workers with structural unemployment into other areas of expertise. Structural being unemployment due to lack of skills or expertise. We recognize this as a harm under our side of the house which is precisely why we would use the accumulated capital to actually redirect into education, other kind of skill training, for example, state jobs, for example, all these mechanisms given by my first speaker, which was never touched upon by any two speakers. But the second clarification I wanna make is that OP gave no counter proposal or reason to believe why workers getting laid off, which is definitive on their side of the house, given that this motion already says like replacing workers with machines, they never actually gave me a counter proposal due to machine, like due to why like uh, these workers getting laid off um, due to machines will get a better life or any kind of other job after getting laid off, right? But the third clarification I wanna make is that the reason OP is gonna lose this debate is because they have antitrust laws as well, which I flagged in a POI and realized that to some extent, company interests and development overall of amazing technology will never be prioritized in a country over human development human being blue collar workers and the bottom rung of society. Given that these policies still exist under their side of the house, I question their principle to the extent that they're actually able to protect workers. First question, are companies actually culpable? Absolutely. We gave you four reasons under this. Number one, because companies are violating labor laws, no response. Number two, they are asymmetrically operating as a business, given that they're not actually giving a net good to society, given that they don't actually have these kind of low, low rung workers actually working for them. But thirdly, that these companies don't provide labor welfare, thus has an unfair advantage over other companies that do provide labor welfare, do provide labor wages, for example, in the same way that we punish monopolies for having an unfair advantage, we think this is proportionate action. But fourthly, that they are providing a net loss for society by making them pay a ton of money for all their products and all their consumer goods without giving any extra skills to society, without actually employing anyone else. We think this is asymmetric to the extent that they shouldn't allow to operate in this way without actually heavy fines towards their production. The only argument standing from them was to say workers will be overworked because you punish them. One, this is absolutely ludicrous, right? Because there aren't any workers. There's only machines in the bottom rung or who's actually doing like blue collar jobs, right? So you are taking money from a company that doesn't have any human labor. Let's get that clear. But secondly, I wanna flip this claim and say companies are more exploitative when they can force workers to work for low wages because the labor market is so saturated under your side of the house, which happens when companies lay off a ton of workers without giving further skill education to their laborers. Legit, the only mechanism from their side of the house was that, well, you know, it's not the company's fault that they off workers, but they never actually explained to me how will these workers actually get new skills to operate in this new job market. But thirdly, even if the company doesn't let go of all workers, that's okay. Because what Prop was standing for, which is our team, was the unjust treatment of workers that got laid off due to some other more efficient machine. The reason why we have labor protection in the status quo, even if it might incur a loss in a company, is because larger profits can never outweigh or prioritize human lives. Because companies are culpable, they must be punished by our mechanism. Why then was our principal argument substantially stronger than ops? Three good reasons. Number one, because we proved to you what businesses should operate as, which is to provide some kind of net good to society. Given that they don't actually provide a net good, that they take a lot of money from consumers buying their products, but they don't actually give any kind of skills to the workers that they have, I don't think this is a symmetrical way of operating as a business or a supplier of a good. But secondly, we brought back policies that exist in the status quo which is in ops world, right? And explain why this policy is parallel to their existing policies as well. Given that tension then, they don't actually have a principle in this debate. But thirdly, simply because we have a far more robust principle compared to their completely inexclusive um, argument on like labor violation, which I'm not sure will happen larger just because we place heavy fines on companies with machines doing all their production, their logic does not stand on this principle. We won that clash. 
The second question I want to ask is then, will this policy be better off for workers and the country's development? Absolutely, it will. Because we told you that welfare schemes improve due to larger capital. You are able to give large worker compensation, improve education, give skills to workers over 40 years old, for example, and open up state jobs for these people. This is only possible when you have larger amounts of capital. The one who was living in a utopic world was opposition then, given that they wanted to co-opt all these benefits without actually explaining to me, how will you actually have this money for all these benefits? Op's case was one of assumptions. Will improve education, improve labor laws, force companies to be nice to people, but no explanation if they have capital for this. No reason why this mechanism also was exclusive on their side of the house. We literally said it in our first speech that the money would be used for this purpose. Also, the only standing mechanism then is that Kartu Chipta will exist on their side of the house and it helped workers. But Kartu Chipta is not enough given people still lose their jobs and don't have a guided ability to find a new job due to their structural unemployment, the lack of ability to have any kind of skills that is competitive enough for this labor market. They have one argument here, or two arguments. Firstly, was that punishment is harmful because goods increase in price. Firstly, absolutely untrue. The company with machinery doesn't need to pay for worker compensation, maternity leave, or wages, and all the variable costs that comes with running a company. So when they said, you reduce wages for existing workers, it honestly misses the mark, because that isn't how econ works, right? Given this is a policy motion, I think companies will know about the policy and will know if they think it's more beneficial to opt into using machines for their production than just using their own human labor workers. But also, this means that even with high taxes on our side, the punishment, our mechanism, the good will relatively be the same price as the goods produced by other companies with human labor. Since the cost of production for that good is so low for the company with a machine, we equalize that cost with higher taxes, with more money being paid to the government, right? The capital, like I said before, will then be redistributed to the bottom rung of society. So in terms of economic analysis, I don't think what will happen is like a lower wages of like for all the other workers, right? Presumably the, 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 um, the, 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 the firm, for example, will have enough ability to like, um, will have enough capacity, for example, to have very low costs, which is why we equalize that under our side of the house. But secondly, even if the good is so low in price on opposition, that's not a benefit anyway, because that will literally lead to a monopoly of the market. I don't think op wants monopolies to exist for basic necessities on their side of the house. But this is where I push a harm on their side of the house, because it is what will happen if you don't heavily punish these companies. These companies will turn into monopolies, and at that point you cut out every other market or like every other producer in that market, right? But lastly, I think the marginal benefit of buying a good for 4,000 rupiah compared to 5,000 rupiah is not a good enough benefit when you compare that to our harm of large scale structural unemployment and not being able to actually fix the lives of individuals who don't have enough skills in this competitive labor market. This means that the country will develop far better as well under our side of the house. Structural unemployment is a big problem. We can see that. The way you fix this problem is by having some kind of state scheme to distribute welfare and payments to those individuals. Firstly, if an economy needs to sacrifice things for a net benefit, which they said to me, listen to my second speaker's extension. We told you that companies are providing an economic loss for society by making them pay a lot of money for their products without giving any skills to society in the form of hiring them as workers. This is worse off for the economy or the development of the economy in general, right? But secondly, also, the easiest then and most efficient way to help workers is by taking from the company who has replaced them and using that money to improve education and other merit goods to actually give skills to these low skilled workers, for example, to these workers who are no longer competitive in the market. If we're talking about structural unemployment, vote for proposition. If we're talking about workers not being able to actually be saved in the market, vote for proposition. We thank the government which whip for that speech. And now to conclude the substantive portion of this debate, we would call upon the opposition reply. Here, here. I mean, opposition whip. Okay, I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I would like to bring some few rebuttals from the opponent's team. So they, they mentioned that if we're doing this, uh, if if we're doing this, if we're re replacing the humans workers with machines, there will be a huge employment. Well, even if there will be an unemployment under our side of the house, will be still the companies will be still still giving them the compensations for the workers, and that's so we want workers. So. And instead, at the op under the opponent's 
opponent side, there will be labors which exploit more, exploits more under the exploits more than under our side of the house, like my previous speakers has explained. So they all mentioned that there there won't be no future further skill educations. Well, we recently stated that we will be providing them this, the facilities to improve their skills for their future work or for their work, for them working with the, with the machines. So it is un un unnecessary to punish those companies because it is not an act of crime with, it is not, not an act of crime with malicious intent and not every companies are money oriented who abandons their workers they still thinks about their workers therefore because to ease their job and decrease the harm and they also mentioned that give workers low quality services Who profit profit without 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 thinking about the workers where therefore their arguments about how workers are going to have proper facilities does not exist even if it does work at the proper facilities and at least we treat our workers more human no overworking or bad like exploitation the proposition proposition teams so i would like to bring two clashes my first clashes is that what is justifiable to replace human workers with machines for the better future it is very possible for human and machines like robots to work together it is an innovative and evolving thing to be done change is good it's good to work 100 percent more efficient and faster is men's work because that we know humans often have a tough, tough time keeping up with the developing technology. They often get left behind. Humans often scared of changes. They tend to stay where they feel like they're, they belong and comfortable. However, this machine still needs humans to keep running. This machine needs human to humans brain to manage them to do work to do what they should do. Therefore, by that, humans and machines could do together could work together and evolve, evolving together. There doesn't have to be punishments for the companies that replacing human workers with companies because it is, is it, it isn't a crime. It's a it's purpose of replacing is to make a better future, to ease the work of human, not to exploit human. As my first speaker has said that if the capital has money to earn these machines, then they surely have the, the money to give the workers compensations, facility to, for them to learn a new skills for their futures. And because without futures and managing the skills uh, and the skills to managing the robots, because without humans, because without, there won't be machines that work effectively and efficiently and by not punishing and letting companies to replace human workers with machines it could give much more efficiency and benefits for the companies and yet the workers therefore replacing isn't a crime needs to be punished so my moving on to my second clash why by punishing companies it could lead to much more harms by punishing and giving penalties for the for the machines it could harm the companies and the people in it the companies won't have enough money to to pay for the machines and pay for their it's the same as exploiting the work by doing allocations for the educations and etc it could also exploit the companies and the people in it the companies won't have the advantages won't have their advantage because they have the taxes and their taxes are higher than its income. Therefore, they can provide the proper facilities and income for their workers. Well, 
Even if there will be some unemployment under our side of the house, we will be still providing them the solutions and the alternatives, the, the facilities to learn many other skills that is out of their league to earn better jobs in the future or to work together with the machines that we that we replace. And therefore it is still beneficial for the companies and the workers under our side of the house. So even if there will be unemployment in the future, we'll be producing better workers and economic system for the country because we developed and we we produce better better we produce better humans with better skill so in conclusion our side the opponent side because country we develop a country with a better working system we develop a country with better workers workers the house we brings much more benefits instead of the harms for the companies and yet for the workers therefore we're proud to oppose we thank the, the opposition whip for that speech now to conclude the entirety of the case from opposition we call upon the opposition reply Okay, guys, I'm gonna my, start my speech in like, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Okay, I'm gonna start my speech in three, two, one. So how is this debate should be judged, right? I think this should be judged in the firstly on justifications. This is a policy debate where you cannot judge this only by the virtue of benefits, right? The same reason that maybe completely shutting down conservative idea might lead to better utilitarian benefits. You cannot do that because the basis in which this action can be conducted is non-existent, especially where you need to punish certain actors, right? So if opposition's case are contingent on the idea that this is not the company's fault, it's because this is the most crucial question to be asked because you cannot punish someone on the basis of benefits, right? So even if in the end of the day, government can prove to us that they have like better benefits in the end of the day, as long as they cannot actually answer why is this justified, I don't think this, this policy should be implemented to begin with, right? So government's entirety of justification is that, hey, human rights exist and hey, we have anti antitrust law that literally come up in their whip, right? And this only explains uh, why the company's biggest responsibility is to prioritize the community and human development, right? We question that. Is this contribution of human development can only come with what government wants? Because we already proved to you that yes, companies fulfill this responsibility the moment they give uh, they give up incentive to their uh, to their labors and the moment when they give a healthy environment for the labors to work, which only happens under our side, right? Uh, but I'm going to talk about, about that in my second questions. But, but also, we already proved to you that the entirety of humanity better development is exists under our side because we have better products and better technologies right literally the moment when companies have like more capitals to begin with they have these capitals to i don't know maybe donate for uh, uh, donate for like an ngo for example or maybe at the bare minimum they give better products right so i think on the overall responsibility companies already fulfill that and they already uh, fulfill their responsibility to humanity development to begin with right the only question that government needs to answer is that is uh, why this can only comes for sustaining jobs for workers which skills has become obsolete in the end of the day. So I think based on this question and based on the clash of justification, opposition take this debate, right? Second, then we talk about impacts, right? Uh, I think that government dismisses the entirety of opposition's harms about exploitations, right? We prove to you that punishing will be worse, but uh, as will be worse, especially when we point out that this is a policy motion where maybe companies have considerations to not opt into automations, right? But this is exactly where it's dangerous because there will be actual companies that are uh, uh, that can actually opt into this policy, but there are uh, 
the, the competition will always exist. So on the comparative is that companies that do not do not want to invest in like uh, ex more expensive labors, for example, or like uh, do not do not want to have that like their aggregate net benefits reduced will always push their workers and laborers to actually compete with their with the other companies that have uh, machines, right? We already proved to you and characterized to you that the type of jobs that we get automated are the types of jobs that require huge quantities outputs in the short period of time. This is why exactly it is prone to exploit the laborers. Uh, okay, but so I think that the harm about exploitation will be uh, will actually further uh, for the wars under government side of the house, right? But we already proved to you under opposition that the that the impacts under our set will actually get get better because we are able to first identify the problems and therefore uh, uh, the state cannot can actually realize that people in, in is in dire needs of education and we already give you a tangible benefits where Clara taught you about Carto Prakardia and any other policies in this debate, right? So I think that the tang more tangible benefits is already proven under our side. The moment when you give freedom to these companies uh, to uh, develop and automate and actually replace their workers to begin with. So I think based on the uh, on the impacts as well, our side wins this debate, right? But even if on the on the virtue of impacts, our uh, government have like many more net benefits, I think we still take this debate as, because especially when you want to punish certain actors, you have to have a huge basis of justification under that. And I think only by the uh, by the virtue of justification in its Hi, sorry. Um, your mic is muted. Is this a technical difficulty or did you accidentally hit the button? Oh, sorry. I already finished my speech. Where did I stop? All right. No, no, no. It's fine. If that was the end of the speech, okay, that's, okay. Great, that's great. We just didn't hear the last few words. All okay. right. Um, to conclude this, the, the case from government and the debate as an entirety, we call upon the government reply. Here, here. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Yeah. My speech will start in three, two, one. Panels, we believe that this debate is actually based on which side can actually provide the best available solution for the workers and also the unemployment rate, structural rate that exists in our society today, and also which side can actually provide a better economy for the government to actually have at the very first place. But before I move on to my flashes, several likeness coming from the opposition inside of the house. They actually doesn't have a clear mechanism on how they can suddenly get the money itself, on how the company should be nice to the people, and also getting a certain benefits through the company itself, and also making a certain better quality of life for the certain workers, the moment that they give certain compensation, the certain workers can get a, a certain job at the very first place. Whereas they never actually prove to us what is the actual parameter for the jobs itself that can actually be get the moment that they fire the certain workers and how can they actually be done by the company of the workers itself. They actually never prove to us what is the parameter of the capabilities of this worker itself. The moment that they get fired, what, how can they possibly get a certain sustainable job? And second, they're actually dismissing our idea on why it is actually justified to fire workers uh, with no actual reasons and actually just give them certain compensations. They actually never engage to our case of those justifications. And notice, there's an actual backlash coming from the first uh, first sec and also second speaker and also the third speaker as well. Whereas the first and the second speaker mentioned that the company is actually money oriented and they actually shouldn't care about the people at the very first place. Whereas the third speaker actually mentioned on how the company isn't actually money oriented and also they should act uh, they actually should care about the people at the very first place. Whereas it makes that the stance of the opposition part of the house is actually unfair at the very first place. Moving on to my clashes, I have two really point of clashes. First is which side can provide the betterment and protection for the workers at the very first place. 
the opposition try to come up with the idea that will actually more effective for the machines to actually uh, do the work and also the human can get a safer job and because they are the firm bro actors. But notice they actually never prove to us how these people can actually get a better job uh, and th those jobs is actually being replaced by the machines at the very first place. Whereas they actually exactly explain to us that these people isn't actually merit enough, doesn't have this enough merit and how are they actually capable to get another sustainable job the moment that they actually getting fired by this company at the very first place. Whereas we believe that exactly that these workers are actually vulnerable actors. They do not actually have enough meritocracy uh, compared to other people. Exactly what they need is actually they need a job, a job to be able to sustain in their life so that they can actually just survive, have a survival survivability that exists. Whereas this low, low, low skill level workers can get a job through actually making this company and also share it with the machine as well. Whereas we can actually have a certain protection also by giving them certain compensations and also the labor law that exists that we believe that it is actually enough to actually uh, to actually protect the absolute rights of these workers at the very first place. So because of those reasons, we should win the first clash. The second clash is which side can actually provide uh, the solution for the unemployment rate at the very first place. The opposition tried to come up with the idea that the government should actually provide the certain trainings and the benefits for the people to actually get, get a certain safer job and the people that is actually getting fired by the company can get certain compensation. But we believe first, there is no certainty what, whatsoever that these workers can actually get another sustainable job. And they are actually likely to only use this certain compensation to have a temporary survival in their life and whereas in our side, the employment rate can actually exist because we do not actually fire these certain workers and we have a certain better quality of work because we believe that this redistribution can improve the better quality of the education and also better society of lives and fix those structural, structural unemployment rate in our side of the house. Therefore, we should win that second clash. On the third clash, on which side can actually bring a better man on the economy itself? The, the opposition try to come with the idea that the company can get a better economy because they can actually produce a better product and better interest from the society. We believe that exactly that they actually never proved to us how these machines itself can create a better products and how these people are actually capable to make the products as same as the machines. Whereas we believe that the moment that the government can actually provide the an improved unemployment rate, it can actually improve this economy status of the society itself. And actually not only the company's economy and to be able uh, to actually, we can actually prevent the company on capitalizing certain monopolizing the certain money for their own benefits. Therefore, beyond because of those three clash clashes, we should win this debate clearly. Thank you. We thank the government reply for that speech and thus concludes the exhibition round of NSDC 2020. We invite the speakers to virtually cross the floor and yeah. Thank you everyone for the debate. Thank you everyone. Thank you for the debate.